Hello, good afternoon. Hear me all right? Yes. So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Uh, it's exciting to see a packed session. Wonderful to see you all in this exciting week for us. It's our favorite week of the year. Welcome to reInvent again. My name is uh, Sham Srinivasan. I'm part of the product marketing team at AWS, focusing on machine learning, and in particular, the topic of the day, Amazon SageMaker. Uh, I'm going to be joined soon by two fine gentlemen, Julian Simon, who lives and breathes machine learning, uh, is a principal evangelist with us at AWS, and a wonderful partner in Niels Moore, who's been our ardent customer, and he's going to talk about SageMaker at British Airways. So welcome again. So before I dive deep, I want to quote uh, one of the greatest visionaries of our age, Steve Jobs, who said, great things are never done by one person. They're done by a team of people. So I want to request you to give yourselves a round of applause, because this wouldn't have been possible without all of you. So it's been a wonderful journey with machine learning and SageMaker. And thank you for being with us all the way. So let's get started. Uh, today, it's going to be a packed session. To cover SageMaker an hour is a challenge. But we'll do our best, and hopefully we learn and make it interactive. We're going to cover what SageMaker is. And two years back, when the baby was born, why did we even build SageMaker? And then we'll talk about machine learning in terms of ongoing challenges. Yes, we have come a long way, but there's stuff which we continue to hear from customers like you and how we can overcome those challenges. Julian will walk us through an interactive demo. It's going to be a highlight of the session, where he'll walk us through the session, especially the wonderful announcements that we did yesterday. And last, but certainly not the least, seeing is believing. We'll have Niels talk about SageMaker British Airways and how they have benefited from the service. So let's dive right in. Sorry. OK. so. Uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, what is SageMaker? It's a very difficult exercise to just def define what SageMaker is, but I'll do my best. We at AWS, we define SageMaker as a fully managed machine learning service that is targeted to help every developer and data scientist to build, train, and deploy machine learning models at scale. Our goal with SageMaker is to help you take your machine learning models from concept to production in the quickest way possible, with much less effort, and of course, with reduced costs. So if you look at SageMaker and why we built it, what I'm going to breeze through in this slide is the capabilities of SageMaker today. When I say today, let's go back as of Monday, uh, you know, before Andy's keynote, and then talk through the capabilities of SageMaker and what each problem it tries to solve. So let's start with the fundamentals. Data. So machine learning is based on data. The more data you have, the better your machine learning model is going to be. So you need to have a very easy and seamless way to prepare data, to collect data, and to clean data. And that, as many of you know, is not very easy. So what we have with SageMaker is to provide you with hundreds of pre-built notebooks. These are notebooks which address a lot of use cases that you can use right away, or you can modify them to suit your requirements. Now, when I talk about data, an interesting aspect of data is labeling, because you need to label the data in the right way to build your training data sets. And labeling is a manual exercise, is expensive. So we addressed that when we launched SageMaker Ground Truth last year around the same time at reInvent, which helps you label data and build highly accurate training data sets. Now, machine learning is built on algorithms. So we give you a lot of pre-built, high-performance algorithms, which are optimized for accuracy, for uh, training, so that you can use these algorithms in the way you want it to work. You also have the flexibility to bring in your own algorithms or choose from hundreds of algorithms that are available on AWS Marketplace for machine learning which people like you have put on Marketplace for others to use. Once you've built your model, the critical aspect of machine learning is to train the model so that it can accurately predict and solve the problem that you're trying to solve. So for training with SageMaker, what we call is a one-click training, which means that you need to make just a single API call, and you can train your model. 
Now, you also can tune your model to make it as accurate as possible. We offer a feature called automatic model tuning, which tunes the hyperparameters of the algorithm that you have chosen and gives you the highly accurate model that is possible for your requirements. Now, cost is always a concern, especially for decision makers. Now, what we did with training is because it can be expensive to manage your own infrastructure, so the infrastructure is fully managed. But we went a step further earlier this year when we launched managed spot training. What this does is it allows you to choose Amazon EC2 spot instances, which is spare AWS capacity. So the beauty about managed spot training is it's fully managed, which means that you don't need to build additional tooling to actually see when the capacity is available. We manage that for you, and you can reduce your training costs by up to 90%. There is an aspect of a machine learning model, which is optimization. So when you build a model, you build it with a particular deep learning framework. But when you go to deploy it, many a time you see that the hardware platform where you're going to deploy it doesn't support that framework. That means you'll have to go back and rebuild the model with a framework that is supported by your destination platform. We solved that problem with SageMaker Neo, which actually helps you train once and deploy anywhere in the cloud or on the edge. So you really don't need to worry about what platform or framework which your platform supports, and the model can be deployed at 2x the performance. Now, you've built your model, you've trained your model, now on to deployment, which follows a similar path as training, which is one-click deployment, where you make a single uh, API call. With deployment, the infrastructure is fully managed and auto-scalable, which means that whether it is a seasonal requirement, like how we have at Amazon.com during the holidays, or for your own business requirements, your infrastructure needs may go up or down. The infrastructure where you deploy is fully managed so that it auto-scales to the seasonal requirements. And finally, let's talk about inference, which is predictions. Many a time, a lot of customers told us that to use a full GPU is expensive to make inference. So we launched Amazon Elastic Inference last year, which helps you use partial GPUs to help you save in your inference costs by up to 75%. And earlier this week, as part of Midnight Madness, we launched SageMaker operators for Kubernetes. For those of you who are operating in your own Kubernetes environments, this is good news because you can continue to use Kubernetes for your orchestration needs. The infrastructure part of machine learning is managed completely on SageMaker. So as you can see, I did breeze through this in, in less than five minutes, possibly. But there are individual sessions for each of these uh, aspects of machine learning and SageMaker that you can possibly take advantage of. So SageMaker as of Monday this week is this, where you can build, train, and deploy machine learning models and have different aspects of the three pillars of build, train, and deploy. And the platform is modular, so you choose which part of the platform that you want to use for. But we didn't end there. We continue to see a lot of challenges with machine learning when we talk to customers. So we talk about things like you know, what tools that are available for software development like debuggers and monitors, which are not very easy for machine learning. So let's go back 24 hours back when Andy announced the announcement of SageMaker. So this is a high-level overview slide of everything that Andy Jassy announced yesterday. It's very exciting for us, which we have been working on this for more than six months now, and where we talked about the first fully integrated development environment for machine learning called SageMaker Studio. What I will do is I will just introduce these concepts in this slide and go through each of these of what problem it's trying to solve and how is it solving it. We've introduced the new SageMaker notebook experience where you can quickly access your notebooks. When you're doing training, it's an iterative process. That means you can lead to thousands of experiments and managing them can be a nightmare and that's addressed with SageMaker experiments. I talked about debugger a little bit. Debugging is always a challenge when it comes to machine learning models. That is addressed with SageMaker debugger. 
And finally, when you deploy the model, you want to ensure that it still maintains the same level of quality as what you had used when you had trained the model before deployment. And that's done through continuous model monitoring with SageMaker Model Monitor. And last but not the least, we are very happy and excited to talk about SageMaker Autopilot. It is the industry's first automatic model generation capability, which gives you complete visibility and control. And how is it done? I will follow up in the next couple of slides. Oh, why is this going back? Okay. So the baby has grown. It's now a giant. So SageMaker today is all of this. You can see that it spans the complete machine learning workflow to build, train, tune, debug, deploy, and monitor machine learning models. So it's still with the three big pillars of build, train, and deploy. But as we talk to customers, as we go through this journey of machine learning, the baby is growing to cover the entire machine learning workflow. So let's talk about each of these new announcements. What is the problem? Why did we even do it? when we heard from customers, and how does it solve it? So one thing we heard from customers is that, you know, there are, with, when it comes to machine learning, there are multiple tools to, you know, address every aspect of the machine learning workflow. There is no integrated experience. It's very difficult to go to different tools, bring them all together. You have to st stitch them manually before you can even have uh, you know, developers and data scientists being productive. So the loss of productivity is painful, and we need to address that. And that's why we built SageMaker Studio. As I said, it is the industry's first fully integrated development environment for machine learning. With Studio, all the aspects which I talked about, whether it is notebooks, whether it is the training aspect and tuning aspect, the debugger, the experiment management, and including autopilot, is there in the single pane of glass with SageMaker Studio. We're very happy to announce that everything of a machine learning workflow can be brought together in this unified visual interface for you to use machine learning. Now let's address each of those problems. Let's talk about data science and collaboration. When we talk about notebooks, it's a common thing that collaboration is not very straightforward. To collaborate notebooks, you need to track a lot of code dependencies, your software versions, and so on, which can be error prone. Also, starting a notebook, you need to spin up the compute first before the notebook even becomes operational. So we solve that problem with the new SageMaker notebooks, which is fast at and shareable. What I mean by that is that you can access these notebooks with your corporate credentials using SSO. It's fully managed and secured by the administrators, so you as a developer or a data scientist need not really worry about managing the notebook or worrying about the security credentials. There is no explicit setup of compute resources. That means you can access the notebook and the compute resources are set up automatically for you. And the biggest thing is about collaboration. You can share the entire notebook code, including the Git repo, with your coworkers so that he or she can see the same notebook with the same code as you and compare results. So that's a huge productivity boost for a team of multiple data scientists, as you can imagine. And then what we're going to continue to support with the notebooks is the flexible compute, which means that you can dial up or down the compute resources depending on your requirements, so that you can save costs as well as address the application requirements. Let's talk about experiments. With experiments, the main point about tracking experiments is training is iterative, which means it can result in thousands of experiments. And it's not just about the experiments. It's also about the different parameters, the algorithms, the training data sets which go across each experiment, which means that you would actually be dealing with thousands of permutations, combinations, which is going to be impossible to manage if you're doing the traditional way of manually doing it with something like a spreadsheet. It's going to be error prone. And that's addressed easily with experiment management, where you can actually track experiments at scale. It's automatically tracked for you. 
even as you're testing and the changing the variables of the experiment. You have the visualization with SageMaker Studio, and you can log your own custom metrics using the SDK and the APIs. So the bottom line is you can iterate faster. You can quickly go back and forth with SageMaker experiments within the SDK or API or within Studio. Now, a big thing about training is debugging. Now, if you look at machine learning training, it's typically an opaque process. You really don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So you think it's a black box. You don't have control in how the data has been analyzed for you before the training is complete. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so what Debugger does is it automatically collects data as you're training. That means it does the automatic data collection for you. It does the automatic analysis and debugging for you. And it's integrated with CloudWatch. So that, that means that the alerts are sent, and you can take the required action and know exactly what's happening with the training process itself. Now, you can do, you can do various things with debugger. You can log metrics with your favorite deep learning framework, whether it's TensorFlow, MXNet, or PyTorch. You can do things like confusion. You can track metrics with confusion matrices. So as you can see, the capabilities have grown, and you can use a debugger as you would use in your traditional software development. Now, after training, when you talk about model monitoring, one thing which model monitor, when you're talking about monitoring, is a concept or a, a fact called concept drift. What concept drift is that your models are monitored, but over a course of time, they can be stale which means that they can deviate in quality because the real world data may be very different from your training data. That can be solved with additional tooling where you constantly monitor the models and you'll have to take the required action manually. Not anymore. With SageMaker Model Monitor, it automatically monitors your model. You can choose to monitor a single inference or 100% of the inferences what you want to uh, monitor and it automatically integrates with CloudWatch so that you can view the alerts, take the re remedial action, and then uh, keep the models as up-to-date as possible with the highest quality. Now let's talk about autopilot. Now the, in the industry, there are many automatic model generation solutions. The challenge with those solutions has been that you don't have any visibility into how those models were built. You do, you're just given a model. You don't know what logic was applied in creating the model. You don't have access to the source code or the notebook. And that's addressed with SageMaker Autopilot. With Autopilot, there are, the key thing is not only generating the model, but it also gives you the complete visibility and control. You have a leaderboard of notebooks with the source code, which you can use as is. There is a recommendation in the leaderboard as well. But for those of you who are advanced machine learning practitioners, you can go back and optimize for further improvement, so that if you want a better quality of the model itself, you get through autopilot. So as you can see, it's not only, bit, not only about generating a model, but also about recommendations and optimization. So coming back to the stack itself, the SageMaker <clears throat> journey continues. This is how the stack looks today, where you start from preparing and building your models, you go on to training and tuning, and you debug the model. The training process itself is very transparent. The opaqueness is removed. And then finally, you go on to deployment and monitoring, where you can monitor the models continuously to keep the quality on par. And lastly, with SageMaker Autopilot, for those of you who want to generate models automatically, just provide your tabular data set, and you have your regression or classification model. Thank you. I to Julian. I don't need it. <laughs> All right. So let me just switch laptops for a second. Here we go. Yes. Okay. Can you see okay in the back? Yeah? 
All right, can you hear me okay as well? And I want to say hi to everybody in the overflow rooms. I'm sorry we couldn't have all of you here, but uh, welcome. Um, so in this demo, I want to uh, highlight most of the services that Sham covered. So this is an end-to-end -end example. I'm using XJBoost, which is the, I guess, the go-to algorithm for many machine learning practitioners as it solves um, classification, regression, uh, ranking problems, which are really, really typical problems. And I'm going to show you uh, what looks like hopefully a real-life scenario starting from the data set Training, optimizing, monitoring, debugging, you know, uh, doing a, a few things with those new shiny services and SDKs. Uh, this is already pushed to a GitLab repo. So if you have laptops, you can go in there and you can follow along. Uh, pull requests are welcome. And uh, if you want to stay in touch before I forget, this is my Twitter account. So feel free to uh, ask me questions either uh, an hour from now or six months from now, okay? So, of course, first, I need to update uh, the new SageMaker SDK um, that got published, I think, uh, uh, last night. And um, I'm going to start by downloading a data set. So this data set is, uh, is already uh, visible in a number of SageMaker examples. It's called the Direct Marketing Data Set. And basically what this data set is, is uh, 41, uh, a little more than 41,000 uh, data samples with 20 features. Uh, and a label, and those samples basically represent customer information, and the label represents whether a specific customer has accepted a marketing offer or not, okay? So I'm using pandas to load this file, and you can see that last column called Y that says yes or no, um, and did that customer accept the offer, okay? So one of the interesting things about this data set is it is highly unbalanced, uh, so you have uh, approximately eight times more no's than you have yeses, right? Because I guess not everybody wants marketing offers. Sorry, Sham. Except if they talk about SageMaker, of course. It will be yeses all the way, yeah? <laughs> so this is what the data set looks like, right? Very, very typical. I'm sure you guys have this in your own uh, backends. Okay, 41,000. So... If you're doing machine learning today, you would probably say, all right, uh, you know, let's, um, okay, I want to build a binary classifi classification model, right? Two classes, yes or no. So there are plenty of algos to do that. So uh, let's use XJBoost or let's use something else. But, you know, we like to make it easy for you. So uh, uh, the first step here would be let's try SageMaker Autopilot and uh, let's see what Autopilot comes up with instead of rushing to, uh, to a specific algo. So the only thing I'm going to do here is split the data set. Uh, so 95% um, uh, of the data set will go to the autopilot job, and I'm just keeping 5% for me to score the model at the end. Okay? Internally, autopilot will split that uh, training chunk again for proper training and proper validation. Okay? All right, so I split those files, upload them to S3, and then I set up the uh, autopilot job. So how complicated is this? Well, the answer is not very. The only thing we need to give is um, that input data config say, saying where is the data set in S3. Okay, that's reasonable. What's the target attribute we want to learn to predict? Okay, so that's that Y column. Okay, so this is the thing we want the model to learn. And we, we have the output data config, which is where we're going to save artifacts and the model. And optionally, we can pass this job config um, parameter that says uh, how long the, run, the job should run for. So here I'm capping the job at an hour, which honestly is a little too short, okay? Um, in real life, you might want to give uh, autopilot more time to explore. Okay, and I can ask it, okay, just do not generate more than 10 candidates. Again, in real life, you might want to be uh, more flexible about this, but it, it, you know, in the interest of time, I want the notebook to run reasonably quickly. Okay, so what's notably missing here? What's notably missing is build a binary classification model. Okay, SageMaker Autopilot will figure it out. It will automatically understand what kind of problem you're trying to solve. Um, Notably missing is any infrastructure concern. 
how many instances, what instance type. Um, again, SageMaker Autopilot has a, a heuristic to uh, come up with the right amount of infrastructure. Okay, so throw your data in S3, say which column you want to learn, done. Launching it is a single line of code. Okay, create AutoML job, passing that configuration. And off it goes, right? And you wait for, uh, you wait for a little bit. So if you, um, if you describe the AutoML job, you'll see, and you loop describing it, you'll see those different states, you know, analyzing data, so looking at, uh, understanding the data set, running all kinds of statistics on the data set, figuring out what pr problem we need to solve, figuring out which algo would be an interesting um, um, attempt, uh, trying to then move to feature engineering and building automatically pre-processing scripts to uh, prepare the data in an optimal fashion for the specific algo, and then tuning, so firing up uh, automatic model tuning uh, in SageMaker to get everything uh, optimized, okay? And so this one ran for about 28 minutes, right? Uh, which again, is probably too short, but uh, as a sample notebook, I don't want you to fire up uh, notebooks that run for days and days, right? So feel free to increase the, the, the amount of time and the number of jobs. Um, so Sham talked about this other service called SageMaker Experiment. So here I've got 10, uh, 10 candidates. But again, for bigger data sets and com more complex problems, you might want to try hundreds of candidates. And of course, you're going to do this again and again and again. So over the course of your project and over the course of many projects, you will train thousands, tens of thousands of models. So um, the, the, the problem here is how do you keep track of all of them, right? How do you, uh, how do you f find the model that you trained last week, and that was the, the nice, uh, shiny model you want to try today. Well, here, automatically, you know, uh, SageMaker Autopilot will push um, job metrics to uh, uh, SageMaker experiments, okay? So you have literally nothing to do here except say, hey, please get me all the uh, experiment information for this AutoML job, and you can uh, get that, again, in a Pandas data frame, which is great, because Panda is the, I keep calling it the Swiss Army knife, for uh, data, uh, columnar data processing, so we all know how to work with pandas. So here I can see those 10 candidate jobs, okay, with attributes and metrics, et cetera, et cetera, right? So all the information all on that candidate is available from experiments, all right? Um, so I can also use the, of course, the, uh, the, the typical, uh, the traditional SDK to list information, so here, here are the 10 candidates. So the top one actually scored 91.78% uh, accuracy. All right, why not? Okay. So uh, I, can, I can describe it again. I can see how that job was built. Um, so it's actually an inference pipeline on SageMaker. So I have uh, a pre-processing job, a training job, and then uh, an evaluation job. So all these are, have, been, uh, have been automatically provided for me. And if you want to know more, uh, the, the, one of the really cool features about uh, Autopilot is the fact that it's going to generate automatically uh, notebooks showing what was done. So let me quickly switch to the notebooks. So first, it generates a data exploration notebook that shows you statistics and insights on your data set, you know, with recommendations, saying, well, we saw this in the data set. Uh, is that all right? You know, you might want to double check. Okay, missing values and, and stats, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So that's probably stuff you would be doing already, you know, manually, but here you don't have to, okay? It's gonna be, it's gonna be generated, and this notebook is uh, available in S3. And uh, I think more importantly, you see the candidate definition notebook that shows you, uh, and, and of course you can run this notebook, yeah? it's not just a, it's not an HTML page, it's, a, uh, it's code you can run. And this shows you uh, how the candidates were built. Uh, it shows you the pre-processing that was applied, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why we, we, want, we like to call SageMaker Autopilot um, a white box AutoML, because it's not a black box model that is dumped somewhere and, and you have to blindly trust it, right? 
Um, you can see why this specific one was picked and how it was built and how data was pre-processed, et cetera. And you can run this notebook to reproduce the results and keep tweaking and maybe refine it to get even more accuracy because you have expert knowledge on, on the data, right? So there's plenty of stuff to read here. So you can see all the candidates and you can see how they were, how they were um, considered and built and optimized, and, right? So I think this is, this is great. Honestly, I love this. All right, so here are the notebooks. You can copy them. Like I said, they're in S3. Now, I want to deploy that top candidate, OK? And um, because monitoring is important, I'm going to use SageMaker Model Monitor to capture uh, input and output data, right? Because maybe, uh, maybe capturing data is just important in itself because for you know, back testing and so on, you want to replay real life data. So capturing is important. But the next step would be um, comparing that captured data to a baseline that you prepared so that uh, you can detect data drift and data quality issues, missing features, et cetera, OK? So configuring, uh, configuring capture, again, is, is pretty easy. Uh, define a capture path and create this capture configuration. Uh, by default, here I, I listed it uh, all for you, but by default, you would only say enable capture true and provide the uh, S3 uh, URI. Uh, by default, it will capture 100% of the, of the traffic, and it will capture both input data and output, so predictions. Okay, but you can, of course, configure yourself um, those settings. Then I create an endpoint configuration. Okay, which, is, uh, which describes the uh, infrastructure that's going to support my endpoints, um, how many instances, what instance type, and of course, providing the data capture. Okay, and then I can simply create the endpoints. And these are uh, vanilla uh, API calls. They were available in SageMaker already, so you may have seen this before. Okay, so I have to wait for my endpoint to come up. That managed instance is created, the model is loaded, um, the data capturer uh, uh, configuration is applied, and then I have an endpoint. So now I can score, uh, and uh, opening uh, that uh, test data set that I set aside, you know, those 5% that I set aside, um, and um, removing the label, because of course I don't want to send the label, I just want to send the features. Um, I go over this test data set, and I use the invoke endpoint API to basically push my test samples to the model. I get predictions back, which of course are gonna be yes or no. And then um, I compute those four metrics called um, uh, precision, recall, uh, accuracy, and F1 score, which are critical metrics when you're building classifiers, showing me uh, the impact of true positives, true negatives, et cetera, okay? And I can see my accuracy is 91.8% almost, so that's good. But remember, it's, a, it's an unbalanced data set, right? So if I had a stupid model that said no all the time, it would be right about 90% of the time. So accuracy for an unbalanced data set is not a good metric. Uh, the F1 score is actually the better metric. And uh, it's a metric between 0 and 1. 0 would be a terrible classifier. 1 is actually a, a, a perfect classifier. So, you know, 0.77 is actually quite good. Interestingly, there's a, um, there's a sample notebook in SageMaker that explicitly trains XJBoost uh, with uh, handcrafted features. And, uh, and it's very, very difficult to get even close to that score. So uh, um, I'm doing a workshop on uh, Autopilot at reInvent. And when we train with XJBoost and handcrafted features, we get to maybe 0.65 if we're lucky. 0.65 F1 score. And here with AutoML, honestly, on the first try, uh, we get to 0.77, which is a massive improvement. OK, so this goes to show that uh, whatever handcrafted features I could come up with are uh, easily, easily um, um, improved on by, uh, by Autopilot. OK, so uh, in the process of scoring that model, of course, I sent a whole uh, load of data to it. And I can see. If I look at my capture uh, path in S3, well, I can see captured data, right? I can see JSON lines, files, storing the data that I send to the model. So I can copy that stuff locally. And if I take a look at one of those files, well, no surprise, right? 
I see the input data. So you can, I know it's JSON and it's not meant for humans, but uh, you can see on the first uh, line, right, it says input data, 35 technicians, single, et cetera, et cetera. So we can see uh, the actual line from the, in, the test data set being sent to the endpoint. So again, we, sent, we send the raw data, okay? And then the inference pipeline built by SageMaker Autopilot will apply feature transformation to that uh, raw data and predict and return the output, which we can actually see below, okay? But this is super useful in itself, right, capture. So you can see what kind of data you're receiving. So I'm gonna stop here for the in interest of time, but what you would keep doing here is um, you would train a baseline on the test, on the, sorry, on the training data set, and then you could uh, uh, run analytics um, using the uh, model monitor SDK. You could compare the statistical properties of that capture data to the, the statistical properties of the baseline. And you could set up alerts telling you, hey, if you see data drift, if you see data quality problems, let me know. Meaning, maybe, maybe something upstream is, uh, is messing with your data, or maybe you're just getting crap data, or, uh, or maybe it's legit data, and the distribution of, uh, of that data has changed, and you need to retrain, okay? But, um, if you can't capture and compare to the baseline, you know, you wouldn't know. Okay, and, uh, and then, of course, I want to clean up and, and delete my endpoint. So here's the, uh, I would say, the whirlwind tour of those new services. Again, this is available on GitLab. You can clone it and run it uh, right now. And uh, thanks again for attending this session, and thanks again for being in reInvent. We're really, really honored to, uh, to speak to all of you. And uh, if you have questions, I'll be here after the session for a little bit, and you can also ping me on Twitter. And I think it's time for Niels uh, to uh, make us fly, right? So uh, let's hear it for Niels. Yeah, here's the flicker. Come on. All right. Um, so my name is Niels. I work for British Airways in engineering, and I got some pretty aircraft pictures. For, no, I just got one, unfortunately. These two guys made me cut all the rest out. Um, and in essence, I'm going to give you a slight sneak, uh, sneak peek in terms of what we are doing with SageMaker to help our operations to get um, you guys to your family reunions, holidays, or maybe even just to your favorite conference of the year. So brief overview, overview of what we are doing is um, essentially we got our aircraft producing a lot of data, well, Ish. Um, that ends up in S3. <clears throat> We're doing a bit of optimization, cleaning metadata generation in Fargate. And then at the end of that step, um, we have a Lambda function that interfaces with, uh, with uh, SageMaker and allows us to uh, monitor certain conditions, certain pre prefixed um, bits and pieces that we have set up. And the net result for us is basically a score for a number of conditions that we want to look at. And in, in this case, the condition B is something that, that sort of starts to deteriorate over time. And in that case, we want to take uh, action, take a look at the data, see what, what, what went wrong and what we have to do to fix the problem. So <clears throat> this is fairly interesting, I hope. Um, I've picked an example of where, we, where we're using SageMaker. And as a matter of fact, it's our first sort of dip in the massive waters of, of machine learning. And what we started with is, well, not really much. We were, were kind of new in that space, so we went like, well, there's a bit of you know, notebooks from Amazon. We took some inspirations. We had uh, great support from our um, solutions architect. Um, and he sort of said, yeah, let's do something. And in essence, with that inspiration, we, we started diving into that space, um, and here we are. Most of our data is unlabeled because, um, well, we have a lot of different sources which essentially will allow us to label stuff, but <clears throat> the initial approach was sort of quick and dirty to some extent, and we've refined it over time since. But in essence, if we look at the bits that we are using right now, we have um, two 
algorithms that we're using in production for unsupervised learning, which is k-means, if that's basically a classification, um, if we have discrete data points, and the other thing, which is something that I'll be uh, talking about today, is random cut forest, which is something that we use for um, continuous data um, and basically for anomaly detection. On top of that, sort of interesting for us is if we're using data and we're starting to label it ourselves, we, we want to do some investigations whether we, we can use supervised uh, learning or machine learning techniques. And basically, we've picked XGBoost and DeepAR. Um, XGBoost would essentially allow us to sort of unravel the, the guts of a problem and give our engineers some insight in terms of what we think the actual root cause of that problem is and, and the potential fix. So um, with, with their expertise, um, we would, we would base, uh, baseline certain criteria or certain um, workflows that, that we would hand out. And DPR is kind of interesting because it would allow us to do uh, time series forecasting, which is basically the, the guts of our data set. And that basically is what, what I'm going to give you a brief introduction about. I'm not sure how many of you are aware of the wonders of flight data and all the bits and pieces that aircraft generate. But in essence, we have two data sources, which is um, data link or ACARS as we call it, which is text-based pretty much, comes over a HF or a SATCOM and is a wonderful blob of characters, numbers, and what, whatever. And in, in this case, I've picked out a few bits that are interesting. So in, in this message, we have uh, the fuel on board plus the uh, takeoff weight. So in essence, that would allow us to just use those two discrete data points. But the, the more juicy, the more interesting data set for us is what, what we can see on the right. Time series data, that is something that is recorded during the entire um, operation at rates up to 20 times a second. So there's really a lot of interesting patterns, data spikes, and all the other noises that you're probably not too interested in. Uh, but it also gives us an, an opportunity to be a bit smarter about things and play with that data to actually come to some intelligent conclusions. So without further ado, what we have been doing is um, a very simple use case in this case, but I think it's kind of cool. Um, this is what flight data looks like. Ish. We have a, a library for us that handles uh, the binary decoding and spits out time series data that we can handle in pandas or numpy. And in, in essence, we have, in this case, four parameters that we record for this particular problem, which is a left and a right system with a redundancy, so four parameters, two left, two right. And what we expect in this case is the good parameters, the healthy parameters, or the healthy system in this case, is, is slightly off the zero axis, but it's pretty close. But yet again, this red fella is a bit off, um, and for us, that can cause concerns, especially if we are considering that we are flying passengers and you don't, you know, you don't want to be late to, to your family meetings, reunions. And for us, obviously, it's an, an identifier and uh, important business metric where we can help us to, to improve our operations. So what we did is we used that data. We um, prepared a year's worth of that data for training purposes and filtered out all the um, bad events, sort of stuff where we know that that was a condition, and fed that into SageMaker. Random cut first is actually quite nice in that aspect. Uh, it doesn't need massive amounts of data. So with a couple of million data points, it, you can get pretty far. Um, in our case, I think it's something like 10, 15 million that we stuck in there takes about a few seconds. It's not really worth the money that sort of few cents. So go away, play with it. It's probably a nice evening that you can have. Um, but net result for us is we had a model. 
And in essence, what we are doing at this point in time is we have a, a monitoring solution that checks each parameter, so four checks per, per flight. And SageMaker returns us uh, an, a data array, which is something that I'm going to focus on now. Um, it, it returns you anomaly scores that um, in, in this case, and the upper, upper uh, graph is the healthy system. So this is basically what, what we'd expect to see. You have a few bits and pieces, spikes in there. Um, I mean, it's an aircraft. It's going around the world, so it's doing stuff. Um, that is not too surprising. However, on the uh, lower graph, red, um, the um, basically average is somewhere around two, um, which is significantly offset to, to where we are. And in essence, this is already kind of useful because with just the blink of an eye, we can see where we're at and you can just, oh, well, that's weird, very easy. The, the only slight tweak that we did at this point is that we have um, spikes that appear in both the healthy and the un unhealthy data set. And yet again, at this point, um, if you want to, we, what we did uh, is a bit of data science on top of that, because if you have four systems or four components on the uh, aircraft that exhibit the exact same behaviors, it should be fairly obvious, at least in our case, that this is a, a common problem so, or a common use, usage of a system. So we filter that stuff out, and that gives us a pretty clear picture of, of how good or how bad that um, system, each individual component is, is behaving. And from our side, the data sets that we, we feed into SageMaker get converted or should be converted into a single sort of score that we can present and alert on. And for us, the net result is what we then do here. Yet again, on the lower side, this is now a, a series of about 30 flights or so. And each of those bar points is the combined data array, the anomaly score that we've seen previously. A healthy system is, yeah, sort of around the 0.9-ish, something like that. Nothing really to worry about. However, on the uh, lower uh, chart, we have a quite clear deviation from, um, from what is or what we consider normal. And it's, in, in this case, it's quite brilliant because it, it takes, in this case, a long time to actually get to, to a certain, um, certain critical stage. Um, this is actually an example that I picked uh, based on historic data. Um, at this point, we're pretty good at detecting things uh, way before it actually affects any of, of our operations. So um, you probably would just see a little spike at some point. But it, it quite clearly shows that StageMaker is effective in looking at that data and uh, scoring that or providing us with an anomaly mechanism, anomaly detection mechanism on top of that um, data that we feed in on a constant basis. All right. So that was a really high level and quick walk through a single example that uh, we have been working on with SageMaker. To sum things up, um, we've been using SageMaker for a year. And in essence, the, the mechanisms that we have developed on top of that are working quite well for us. We have started off with sort of traditional statistical data science mechanisms to um, detect certain conditions. And comparing that to SageMaker, it is a bit less work, which is nice, but it's, for us, the important bit. It's actually sooner in the development of that condition. So in, in most cases, it's about four flights sooner. So it gives us more time to react. And in a sense, the um, important bit for us is we want to be able to schedule that plane for maintenance rather than some, let's say, 100 to three, four, 500 passengers sitting at, at the airport wanting to go places, and it's like, mm, sorry, guys. Um, the other advantage of SageMaker for us is it allows us to focus on our expert knowledge, our expertise, um, which is handling flight data, as well as understanding the aircraft systems, 
because it, an airplane is quite a complex system. It's beautiful if it works, but if you start digging around certain bits and pieces, it gets quite, quite tricky in places. So the SageMaker, and especially with Random Cat Forest, we have a really easy mechanism of looking into the various components and classifying um, that data. However, rather interestingly, um, because it's a bit sensitive in places, um, we found some false positives, um, and it's not actually a false positive, but because the, ac and the ac plane is quite a complex system, parameters are affected by different sort of root causes, and this is what we can see here. S same, um, same sort of graph that we saw previously with the normal and unhe uh, unhealthy data set. However, in this case, we basically have a, a flat, just a step change, and in this case, it's kind of interesting because um, we were like, okay, well, hang on, that doesn't look right. But it's not good, and it's not what we expected. So we, we looked in the maintenance records, and yeah, electronics component failed. And in essence, it's nothing major. We had that going on for a little while. Um, but in essence, for us, we were surprised because previously we were not able to detect things like that. And SageMaker actually allowed us to start looking in, in other bits and pieces. And this is basically where our expertise or our, our training and our testing now uh, comes into place. Um, for the last couple of minutes, just um, how we train and how we test our stuff is um, quite simple in a way, which is probably the beauty of the process, in my humble opinion. Um, we have lots of engineers with brilliant ideas, and not so brilliant ideas as well, but um, in most cases, they came up and say, yes, look, I've, I've seen this. Can we do something about this? It's qu quite a clear pattern in the data. So we have a few job, Jupyter lab boxes where we can test and play around with models, different things, ideas. And at, at some point, hopefully, um, we have a model that we're happy with, and we run historic data against that. So we have a Fargate a task that allows us to shove usually something between three and five years of data through that model to see whether we're happy with the results, you know, false positives, and it also gives us an opportunity just to gain confidence with what we're doing. And if, if that all works out, um, we're then throwing everything in production and basically doing exactly the same thing. So for us, we have this um, very, I think, very agile process where there's not much, well, how, it's probably not polite, but there's not much you know, breaking and stopping things in place which makes us quite um, capable in terms of putting things out quickly. However, the, the important bit for us is no matter what we predict, at the end of the day, a human and a subject matter expert who was familiar with that aircraft type, with that specific system on the aircraft will always review that data and make a determination. So um, for us, it's just, when you have about 1,000 flights a day, it's just a, a really easy mechanism for digging through that data and giving us pointers where to look. And now the last bit is, if we just look what we do with SageMake and how we integrate that into our system. On the first slide, I spoke about the Lambda that interfaces with SageMaker. So we get a message that says, ooh, got a new file. I got a flight data file. I have to do something with that. Um, a Lambda function will then check whether that SageMaker endpoint is active. If not, it will create one. Otherwise, we'll just start that, um, that process. Um, another Lambda will pick up that data, flight data, feed it into SageMaker, work out what to do with it. And then we have this dotted line which feeds back, and this is the process that we, were, we are using if we have second or third or fourth or fifth iteration. And basically it allows us to say, well, we found something interesting, but we don't know what exactly, so we can loop over that process and use a different model or a different technique just to dig down um, to the root cause of the entire problem. And once we're happy, Basically, once that process is complete, we'll just ping everything out, and another Lambda set sends out notification and creates the uh, necessary alerts for um, what we are doing. And with that, Can I 
steal that back again. Uh, I just want to wrap it up. Uh, so that was a stage maker for you in terms of what we have today and what all we have announced this, uh, this past week. And we do have a lot of related sessions and workshops for you, so where you can dive deep into each of these announcements. It's very difficult to do justice to His each of these up. announcements. So we do have related sessions. We have a workshop right after this, uh, this session led by Julian. Uh, in Venetian makes it easy for you to commute. Uh, and uh, through the week between today and the rest of the week. Thank you all. We'll be around for questions. If you have any, if you have, I think we have about four minutes. If you have questions, you can come to the mic here, and after the session, we'll be out of the, uh, we'll be outside as well. Thank you.